Hey guys, what's up? It's Haiti. Before that we started the guide, I just wanted to say uh, if there's a certain guide you want to see in the future, please comment it, uh, DM it to me on Twitter, or, you know, I try and stream every weekday on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Haiti. You can come in the chat and just tell me and I can read it right away and then I can get working on that guide right away. I'm pretty sure the next guide should be a Discordia guide, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be coming next. I'm not 100% sure. But remember, if there's something you want to see, fastest way to tell me is probably Twitch then YouTube comments and Twitter. So just let me know whatever you wanna see. It doesn't have to be just guides. It could be anything Smite related, any type of learning video, non-learning video. I don't give a shit. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys learned something. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever the fuck, all that shit, all right? Whatever, hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, like every other guide, we're gonna start out with builds. My Hera build for level 1 is going to be Mage's Blessing Lost Artifact, which is, you know, Rata Tahuti Tier 1, and then 1 Health, 2 Mana Pots, and Beats. This is going to be your build at level 1. Then, when you start going into the build, I like getting cooldown boots, full Doom Orb. Now, here's where you have some decision making. If they have a lot of characters that can dive you, and these characters are physicals, so if they have like, you know, a really hard diving assassin that's gonna look to focus you a support that's kind of divey and a solo laner that's divey, you can go third item a breastplate of valor, or you can wait and get your flat pen item, which is either gonna be, oh God, excuse me, sorry. It's gonna be divine ruin if they have healing. If they don't have healing, you wanna get spear desolation, and then you can get your uh, breastplate of valor. Or you could do it the other way around. If you need the defense right away, you can get your Breastplate of Valor, and then you can get your Flat Penetration. But these next two slots, I always go either Breastplate of Valor if I need Anti-Dive and a Flat Pen item. If you don't need Anti-Dive, you can. I would go third item, your Flat Pen, and then instead of Breastplate, you can get your full cooldown reduction from Kronos Pendant, all right? So if they have a lot of dive that you need to get off, you can get Breastplate of Valor, build in either two slots. If they don't have much dive, you just get Kronos Pendant, which you'd build in the later slot, and then you'd get uh, your flat pin item being Deso if they have no anti-heal, and Divine... Uh, Deso if they have no healing, sorry, and Divine if they have healing. Then at this point, I'd get Soul Reaver next. And then last item, you'd always want to get Obsidian Shard. You can get coin instead of obsidian shard, but at the but at sixth item, stacking coin is gonna be kind of a bitch, so I'd recommend just getting shard. Real quick, I forgot to mention this. Your second relic is most likely gonna be Aegis, but if they have not too much burst and they have a lot of auto attackers, like say a hunter plus a Baka, Kali, Nemesis, something like that, and their mage isn't too big on the AoE or you don't think they're gonna, gonna get hit by the mage too much, instead of going Aegis, you can get Upgraded Shell. Upgraded Shell is also really good. Aegis is fine, but remember, Upgraded Shell is also really good if you just want to prevent auto attacks coming your way. And Upgraded Shell can affect you and your team, while Aegis only affects yourself, alright? So when it comes to Relic Choices, it's either, it's either going to be Aegis if you want to just help yourself and prevent getting bursted, or if you want to prevent, like, auto-attack assassins or auto-attack carries from hitting you and your teammates, you get Upgraded Shell. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is Hera's kit and what her abilities do exactly. This, remember, there are gonna be no mechanics or like tips in this section. This is just for people that have no idea what Hera does, or if you have a slight idea, but you don't know exactly what she does, or even if you know what Hera does, I might be able to tell you one or two things that you, maybe you didn't know. But if you just wanna know mechanics, you can skip all the way to the mechanics section, but this is just gonna be going over what the kit does, all right? Also, to make it flow better and to make all the abilities make more sense, I'm going to go over the 1, the 2, then the alt, then the sh 3, and then the passive, alright? So we're going to go 1, 2, alt, 3, passive, alright? Starting it off is going to be your 1, which is called Royal Assault. The target for this ability looks really weird, not going to lie, alright? So what this is, is Hera does a little hand movement in front of her, doing some damage in this giant, in this cone you see in front of her, and then she does another hand movement, and, to, and Argus does uh, more damage into that large rectangle shape in front of her, and you see that there's this white line in the middle, the white line I believe is bonus damage. Enemies being in the corner side. 
Yeah, it's bonus damage. An extra 15% damage. I was right. Pog. All right. So if I'm in someone's face, I can line it up like this. They get hit by the cone and they get hit by the slam. So that's what it looks like. Oh, I should probably go get reduced cooldown quick. Oh, thought this was already on. There you go. You can also, you know, separate them. So you can do cone here, slam there. And when it comes to minions, only minions, by the way, if any minions get hit in the cone, they get sent to the rectangle. So if I'm right here, you see the rectangles are on the archers and the cone is on the warrior. If I use it, the warriors get knocked back into the archers and Argus's hands come down and clap together, all right? Uh, this ability also works over walls, like the rectangle part, if I do it like this. You can see the Odin bot got hit on the other side. Also, this um, minion knockup only works on lane minions, so it does not affect jungle camps. So jungle camps will not be knocked up, all right? And that is Hera's one. All right, the next part of Hera we're gonna go over is her second ability, Polymorph, which is, which is this giant straight line skill shot. What Polymorph does is when you use it on a, per, on a target, it does damage to them and polymorphs them into a random jungle camp on the map you're playing on. So if you're playing Siege, it'll turn them into one of the Siege camps. If you're playing Conquest, it into one of the Conquest camps. What they turn into changes nothing, it's just like a visual effect. But what polymorphing someone does is it silences, silences them and disarms them, all right? And on top of that, your polymorph has a slow. So anytime someone gets hit by this, they're gonna get slowed, silenced, and disarmed, all right? So if I use it on the Soden bot, he's gonna take damage. He's gonna turn into a blue buff, I think that was. And while he's turned into that blue buff, he's silenced, slowed, and disarmed. It can also hit multiple people. If I use it on all three of these guys, they're all turning into different camps. All of them silenced, slowed, disarmed. Ooh. This ability also does work over walls. Let me just get reduced cooldown quick. Hmm. So if I come over here and I shoot it through a wall, it'll hit the Odin just fine. He'll still get CC'd and he'll still take the damage. And obviously you can hit multiple things with it as I just show you shooting it in a line, all right? That is uh, Hera's second ability, Polymorph. The next ability in Hera's kit I wanna go over is probably her most iconic ability, Argus, all right? Or is that is that even what it's called? Argus the Defender, that's what it's called. Fuck, I didn't know that. I thought it was just called Argus. So when you click the ability and you see the icon, what Argus is, is it's a giant circle. When I use the ability, Argus is gonna come out of the sky, landing in the circle, doing damage and knocking everyone up. So if I use it on this Odin, it's gonna do damage and knock them up. And Argus will aggro whatever's in the circle. So if I threw Argus right here, he would just stand next to me and vibe. But if I throw him like this, he'll automatically aggro Odin and start punching Odin. So when I summon Argus, he's automatically aggroed to Odin and punching Odin. I can click my alt ability again to call him off, call him back. I can I can click my alt again to like get this little targeter and I can use it to like get make Argus beat someone up, call him back, similar to Scotty Dog. Also, Argus's attacks aren't random. He has an attack chain. So what Argus does is he does a normal basic attack, then he does an AOE slow, and then he does a line attack. So if I send Argus on this Odin bot, you'll see he'll do basic attack, AOE ground plant, and ground pound slow, and then line attack. So auto attack, AOE ground pound slow, hits them both, and a line attack would hit all three. Ground pound line, see that? And that is basically Argus, your ultimate. The next part about Hera's kit that we're gonna go over is her shield, or her third ability, sorry, Divine Shroud. So what Divine Shroud does is when you use the ability, it gives you a shield and a movement speed buff, all right? So if I just use it, I get a gigantic shield and then I get a movement speed buff. The shield does go away after I think four seconds it was. Yeah, the shield goes away after four seconds or when it's depleted. So if someone's attacking you and they take away the entirety of the shield, even if the four seconds weren't up, you'd lose your movement speed as well. So if I'm just chilling and my shield's gone, but there's still two seconds here, my movement speed will be gone as well. Your movement speed goes when your shield goes. The shield also has bonus effects with Argus on the battlefield. So if I summon Argus, Argus, Argus has a base movement speed. So if I summon him to go beat up this Odin, you know, he strolls over there, which he's pretty slow. But if I use my shield, Argus gets a movement speed buff. And as you can see, he's way faster. He moves like a lot faster. Argus also gets this ticking mystical male effect around him. So if I'm just vibing and I shield, look at that. Argus is doing tick damage to everyone like mystical male. Remember, this damage is only from Argus, not from you. So only Argus gets this ticking damage. 
And that's what Hera's shield does. Also, similar to how if your shield gets depleted by someone hitting you and you lose your movement speed, Argus will also lose his movement speed and his mystical mail effect. The last and final part about Hera's kit is Hera's passive, Commanding Presence, alright? So Commanding Presence does a few things. It interacts with your shield and Argus, alright? What it does to your shield is... Actually, I need to take Reduce Cooldown off for this. So let me just walk over here. Take it off. So every time I auto attack someone or use an ability on someone and my shield is on cooldown, it will reduce the cooldown of my shield by 0.3%, 0.33%, sorry. So if I use my shield, it's on cooldown now. If I use abilities on this guy or I'm auto attacking him, my shield cooldown is going down. So 0.33 seconds for every auto or ability. So if you hit someone three times, that's a second off your shield basically. This also affects Argus, so let me just summon Argus at the Fire Giant so he takes some damage. So if Argus is on the battlefield and he is taking damage, so we're going to chunk out Argus a little. Ooh, we're going to get him a little low. That should be fine. What your passive allows you to do is every time you auto attack or use an ability on a god... It heals Argus. So if you see, I auto attack him, Argus got healed for 120. I two him, Argus gets healed for 120. If I keep autoing him, Argus is going to continuously get healed. Alright? Now if Argus despawns, his timer's almost out. We're waiting for his timer to go out completely. Alright, Argus, hurry up. There it is. Now Argus is on cooldown. Whenever I use an ability on an enemy god or I auto attack him, Argus' cooldown is getting reduced by one full second every time I hit this guy. Alright? So your passive works on Argus when it's on cooldown, it works on Argus when he's on the field, and it works on your shield uh, when it's on cooldown at all times. So if Argus is out, don't think your shield just stops working with your passive. Your shield is always, your passive is always working with your shield, and then it works with Argus when he's on the battlefield and when he's on cooldown, alright? So that's Hera's passive. The next thing we're going to go over is Hera's level order, alright? Hera's level order is pretty straightforward, but there are a few things I guess you should know. First thing being is level 1. Level 1, 99 times out of 100, you're going to get Royal Assault. It's your most damage at level 1, and it's your best wave clear. The thing about Royal Assault is it's, it's pretty shitty when it comes to fighting people, while Polymorph is probably one of the best abilities in the game when it comes to fighting people. So at level 1... If you're doing a normal start at like speed buff or going to your mid wave, which you are 99% of the time, you always want to get your one. But in the very off slight chance you're getting invaded or someone's in, or you're invading or you're looking for a level one fight, maybe you're playing arena or something and trying to fight people. Uh, well, I guess at arena you start at level three, so that's irrelevant. Never mind. But on the off chance you're fighting people at level one, you can get your two. But 99 times out of 100, you're going to get your one at level one. Then at level 2, you get your 2. Then at level 3, if you think you're in danger or you need a shield or the movement speed buff, you can get your shield. But 9 times out of 10, I'd get another rank in your 1. Now at level 4, you'd uh, normally get uh, your first rank in your shield. But if you put a point into your shield at level 3, then you get your 1 again. At level 5, oh, that was the wrong thing. At level 5, you want to get your ultimate. At level 6, I'd get your 1 again. At level 7, the 1. Level 8, I like holding a point. And then at level 9, you get your 1 plus your ult. At level 10, you want to start maxing out Polymorph, so you get your 2. At level 11, you get your 2. Level 12, you get your 2. Level 13, you get your ult. Level 14, you get your 2. Level 15, you get your 3. Level 16, you get your 3. Level 17, you get your ult. Level 18, you get your 3. Level 19, you get your 3. And level 20, you'd finish off by getting your ult. And that is Hera Level Order. Alright, the next thing we're going to talk about is Hera's mechanics, alright? So a lot of people consider Hera to be like the mage version of Scotty, where it's just like, haha, I dropped my ult on you, and now I can just AFK while I, it kills you, alright? But there is some depth to Hera, alright? The first thing I want to talk about is wave clear on Hera. And I know what you're saying, wave clear, that's pretty fucking straightforward. Use your abilities on the wave, but with Hera, it's not as simple, alright? So as you guys remember in the uh, in the earlier section, or if you already know how Hera works, 
Her one is a cone attack in front of her and then a clap with the hands. And if there are minions in the cone attack in front of you, they'll get knocked into the hands. So if we walk over here. <coughs> oh god, excuse me. I'll, you know what? I'm gonna buy Bumba's mask real quick to speed with this up. Let's get some more MS real quick. Nice. So if I walk over here, I wait for the minion wave. Oh, and I use my one. Okay. And I use my one. It's gonna knock back the warriors into the archers and it's gonna do the clap damage, right? All handy dandy. The thing about Hera's one is it cannot knock back, knock back minions. This isn't for Hera's one. This Well, this is for Hera's one, but this works on a lot of different CCs in the game. So if a minion is in a state of knockback, it cannot be further knocked back. So you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? Hera has no other knockbacks in her kit. Well, she actually does. So if you guys don't know this, when you auto attack a minion, you knock back the minion. The minion gets knocked backwards. And because of the thing I just told you where a minion who's in a knockback state cannot be knocked further back, if I auto attack one, this one minion that was in a knockback state did not get sent back here and did not get into the clap damage. So that one minion missed out on a bunch of damage. An early game, this can affect a lot. Early game, you can miss an entire minion that you're going to have to auto attack down. So if I'm auto attacking the wave, auto attacking the wave, auto attacking the wave, and then I want it, I have to make sure to stop auto attacking so the minion is not in a state of knockback, all right? You got to make sure to always do that. Early game, that can fuck you up hard, especially if it's three minutes in and a gladiator creep spawns and you auto attack the gladiator creep. Like, watch this. Auto one, this minion stays here because he was in a state of knockback, all right? So you want to make sure to always stop auto attacking, make sure the minions aren't being CC'd at all, and then use your one or else you're going to fuck up your wave clear and you're going to be sitting in mid auto attacking a minion for like eight years, which can make your clear a lot slower. So make sure to never do that. That's one of the biggest fuck ups I see people do. The next thing we're going to talk about is the strongest part of Hera's kit. I know what a lot of you are thinking. That means Argus. No, 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 no. The strongest part about Hera's kit with out a doubt is polymorph polymorph is probably one of the most op ridiculous broken cc's in the game this shit is ridiculous <coughs> and the thing that makes it so ridiculous is it's a polymorph on a non-ultimate ability all right for those of you that don't know there are only two polymorphs in the game one being hera's polymorph which is on a very low cooldown and the other being cernanos's ultimate so it's a, on a basic ability and then a fucking ultimate Polymorph is super strong for one reason alone, and it the reason is it's not affected by DR. For those of you that don't know what DR is, that's short for diminishing returns. So when you get CC'd in Smite, you get DR put onto you, and DR makes it so any further CCs don't last as long or aren't as potent, all right? So for example, if I had a stun and I stunned this Odin bot, and my stun was two seconds, the Odin bot would get stunned, and then he'd be stunned for two seconds. And then if I tried to stun him again right after, the stun wouldn't last two seconds. It would last somewhere around 1.6 seconds because he had a stack of DR on him. Then if I tried to go on him again, the stun would last for around 1.4 seconds because I have more DR on him. You know, stuff like that. DR can stack up to three times and it lasts on a character for around 15 seconds. There's no physical way to see DR. Like, it's never going to appear on your HUD bar or anything like that. You just got to kind of have a feel for it, all right? Now, the thing about Polymorph that makes Polymorph so strong is no matter how much a person is DR'd, Polymorph stays the same length. So if this guy has three stacks of DR on him, so he's going to get stunned for like, on a two second stun for say 1.2 seconds, my polymorph that's two, uh, my polymorph that's a two second thing that would get DR'd, you know, 1.2, isn't gonna get DR'd. It's gonna stay at two seconds no matter what. So if you ever hit your two on someone, unless they have some type of purification, they are going to be polymorph for two full seconds no matter what. And the thing that makes this OP is it's AOE and it's a pretty easy to hit skill shot. So Anyone you hit, if they don't have beads, they are fucked. They are slowed, silenced, and disarmed for two entire seconds. <coughs> so one of the strongest parts about Hera is looking to follow up on big CCs with your two. Because, you know, they can't be... Your two is always going to be a full two seconds, alright? <coughs> alright, the next thing I want to talk about is Hera's Argus and Shield combo, alright? One second. 
Oh, sorry about that. I just had to clear my throat. So Argus' Hera plus Shield combo is super potent, all right? Also, you can pop your Shield and then Ult right after, and when Argus comes out of the sky, he will have the Mystical Mail and the Movement Speed buff. Or you can Ult, and while Argus is falling, you can pop the Shield, and that way Ar and uh, Argus will also come down with the, you know, the Movement Speed and Shield buff. But just remember, whenever you Ult, you want to try and have your Shield up. That way you can use your Shield right away. And the thing that makes our Hera so good is she's kind of known as the anti-dive machine. Diving Hera is literally impossible because anytime a group of people dive, you just click Crush Argus shield, Argus. kite around with movement speed and Argus ticking on them, polymorph them, one in here, and then you keep running in circles. And then when your shield goes on cooldown, you can still two them, one them, and then your shield's gonna come off cooldown again because you're passive. And then you three again, you run around, and people just can't kill you because you're Hera. Hera has a bunch of shields, a personal bodyguard, and a polymorph. So she's kind of the anti-dive monster. So if you're not initiating fights with Argus or you're killing someone off with Argus, you usually want to save Argus to uh, prevent anti-dive. The moment someone goes on you, you just Argus shield and then you kite around, kite around, kite around. Then you try and get a polymorph off on them and beat them down a little and turn, return some damage, all right? Argus is also super good for starting fights because initiating Argus with, with Argus is really strong, all right? You can just throw Argus on their backline, shield, and if they jump on you, you still have your shield plus both your relics. And while they're jumping on you, your Argus is fucking up their backline. The one thing you do have to worry about is if you're in a fight and you shield, remember, if they take your shield away, Argus loses his mystical mail effect and his movement speed, all right? So you want to still try and juke abilities, not get hit by too much, to keep your shield alive. That way Argus continues to get his bonus damage and his bonus MS, alright? Argus is fucking insane when it comes to playing in lane though, alright? So I'm just going to pretend, I'm just going to go in a free fight and pretend this is the mid lane. One of the things that Hera is super, super good at is all inning the enemy mid laner early in mid game, alright? If you go into early and mid game and you're just chilling, at any point in time, if someone walks up without an escape, or they walk up even with their escape, but they're a little too close to tower, you can just Argus 3 and full commit at them, and they are almost guaranteed dead, all right? And the guaranteed dead combo that you usually use for mid all in is, fuck, all right? Well, we need to wait for Argus to go on cooldown, but what you do is you'd summon Argus on someone, they get knocked up from Argus being summoned. While you're summoning Argus, you want to use your shield to get the movement speed and the tick out. And obviously they get knocked up. While they're knocked up, you use your polymorph on them, which will get a guaranteed hit on because they're knocked up. And then while they're being slowed by your polymorph, Argus is going to use his slow auto on them. So they have two slows on them, which gives you a guaranteed hit of your one. All right. So that's Argus's like 1v1 in lane combo. I'm going to do it on this Odin butt for you in a second. Gonna wait 10 seconds for my ability to come off cooldown. Bop, 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 bop. Five, four, three, two, one. So remember, we're gonna use Argus, then our three, so he gets the damage off right away. Then we're gonna use our two on the knock on the Argus knock up, and then we're gonna use our one while they're slowed by our two. So Argus three, two on the knock up, and then one while they're slowed, alright? This combo alone... Oh, did my shield not go off there? I'm pretty sure my shield went off there. But, like, alt, shield, two, one. All right? And that in lane is super strong. Argus has a shit ton of health. Like, look. At level one, he has 700... At level five, sorry. He has 700 health. Which is a lot. Like, if Ascilla ults that, she's, she's not even going to be able to kill him. Like, Ascilla can't do shit to this guy. All right? Like, most mid laners, if they don't have an escape ready, and you just summon Argus and full combo them, they are going to die. Hera's are a really good snowballer for this fact alone. That if anyone ever walks up, you can just punish them by alt 3 2 one -ing. And then you just stand behind them, auto-attacking, keeping your shield alive so Argus can just beat them down and kill them. Argus is also a super good tower diver. Because, obviously, if you use your full combo on someone and they try and escape away, Argus can tank tower while you continue chasing them, alright? Argus can tank tower for a while as well. So you always want to be looking to all-in people in mid as Hera, because your 1v1 potential is fucking sick. Because you turn every 1v1 into a fucking 2v1, because you have this Chad motherfucker. 
with you at all times, fucking vibing. Look at this fucker. Can, can I see you without? Okay, dickhead. Can can you not, man? Look at him. There you go, buddy. We got fucking Chad Janice over here. Janice popped some roids, dog. Like, he does so much in the 1v1. His auto attacks do a shit ton of damage. And the most, like, underrated part of Argus is your shield. Your shield, when it gives Argus Mystical Mail, does an absurd amount of damage. It's insane. No one fucking realizes how much damage your shield does. That's where a lot of your damage comes from in the all-in. So in lane, you always want to be looking for the all-in so you know you can... Let me... I'll show you on the Odin bot one more time. Alt shield. 2-1. You want to be looking for that all the time so you can beat the shit out of someone and get some easy solo kills, you know? You can snowball out of control with Hera because you're just soloing people left and right. Because if anyone walks up to you without a fucking way to peel off Argus, they are doomed. And when you're in team fights, you just hold Argus for when you get dove, then you Argus your feet, shield, kite, two, one, keep running in circles, run to your support. Or you can use Argus to initiate the fight. Remember, you see their mage walk up too far? Fuck it, throw Argus on them. Late game, this dude has fucking, how much health? He has 3,500 health, all right? For any carry, any carry late game, that's gonna take them a little bit to like fucking kill by themselves, all right? 3,500 health is a lot. That's more than most tanks have. I'm pretty sure 3,500 health is more than any character in the game can get, except Cthulhu and his ult, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Cthulhu and his ult can have like 5k health, because that character is fucking ridiculously broken. Holy shit, Cthulhu is fucking uh, OP as fuck, all right? But that's what Cthulhu, uh, but besides Cthulhu, Argus has almost 4,000 health. And he gets some... Um, a decent amount of protections, but Argus gets really shitty protections. His protections usually do nothing, especially against carries who are going to be building penetration, all right? So, in team fights, just look look for the enemy mage. Usually, you don't want to use Argus on the ADC because the ADC can shred him. And if the mage and ADC are grouped up together, usually the ADC can shred him. But you just want to look for the enemy mid laner or anyone without an escape. Just Argus 3 and then look to kite around and keep your shield alive. Or if your team can initiate without you going in, you wait to Argus yourself and then you, you know, you kite around. Another thing that you don't want to disrespect is Argus does an okay amount of landing damage when he lands. Look at that, 300 plus 35, 35 so 340-ish damage, right? That's like a decent, that's like a regular ability. So Argus does do an okay amount of damage, so you can use Argus to like execute people. Another thing you have to remember is when you summon Argus, he's going to aggro wherever you summons, uh, summon him. So let's just wait for this Ar Argus to despawn. Despawn, buddy. So if I summon Argus right here, there's nothing in his initial zone to aggro, so I have to manually aggro him here. But if I summon him here, he's going to aggro Odin by himself. I won't even have to click anything because Odin's already in his summon aggro zone, all right? So if I just click right here, I'm just gonna click my alt button, and then he automatically aggroes. You can see the aggro thing going on. Also, if you're ever sieging tower, you should know that towers will aggro Argus over minion waves. So if you have a minion wave in the tower and you send Argus under it, the tower will switch aggro to Argus. It'll start ignoring the minion wave and always go on Argus. Towers will always choose to go on Argus no matter who, no matter who else is alive. Another thing Hera is really, really good at, people don't, this is one of my favorite things about Hera, is Hera is one of the best objective sneakers in the game. If you're ever just vibing in mid game, and you have your hunter with you, you don't need a support, you don't need a tank, you don't need anyone. You can just come to Gold Fury, even Fire Giant. You can come to Gold Fury and Fire Giant, not evolved Fire Giant, but regular Fire Giant. You can summon Argus to tank it, and then you you and your ADC will be able to do Gold Fury or Fire Giant with no frontline support. The one thing you want to be careful of is always make sure Argus is tanking and not you. Because if I'm tanking and then I summon Argus and use my shield, the Gold Fury is going to be attacking me. And this Gold Fury is really low level and I'm like level 20, so like you don't get to see it. But if it was a normal Gold Fury, the Gold Fury would destroy my shield in like three autos and Argus would lose all his bonus damage, alright? But mid game, if you're ever at Gold Fury with a hunter or what the fuck? What the fuck? Yo, yo, wait, what the fuck? Dog, no! I'm on yours! What the fuck? Hello? 
Yo, what the fuck? How the fuck did this happen? He, I can hit. Hello? Get away from me, dickhead. What the fuck? Excuse me? Argus just turned on my ass. All right. Apparently, if you use Argus too much, he's done being your bitch. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but Argus just decided. I've. I, I don't know. I've never fucking seen that. What the fuck? Alright, so as long as Argus doesn't just decide to betray your ass and doesn't want to fucking like work for the enemy team, if you're ever in late game, if you're ever in mid game, you can summon him on the Gold Fury or the Fire Giant, have him tank it, and you guys should be able to get it for free. If you're in like if you're in late game to the point where you have six items, you don't even need a hunter or like any other character. Also, I'm saying hunter, but if you have like a jungler with you, you can also do it fine with just your jungler. You don't even need what how the fuck does this no. how, how does this keep happening? What's going on? Is this some type of bug in jungle practice? I'm so confused. Get him off. Can I summon an Argus? I just, I, I just targeted Argus with Argus. How? Is this some type of bug in jungle practice, man? All right, well, that doesn't happen in Conquest or any other game mode. I don't know what's happening, but when you summon Argus uh, uh, on either of these things with like a jungler or a hunter, Argus can tank while you guys get him. And then if you're in like late game where you have six items, you can solo Gold Fury with just Argus. You can't solo Fire Giant ever. You always need someone to help you. But late game, you can solo every Gold Fury 100%. But using Hera is super good to sneak objectives because people can never tell when you're doing it. Because no one suspects, oh, their Maiden Jungle are missing, but their dual lanes in lane. What the fuck? They got Gold Fury? Like, no one suspects that. No one thinks, oh, two people are missing, they're on objective. Usually it's, oh, all four of them are missing, or three of them are missing, stuff like that, right? But you want to try and look to sneak objectives whenever you can with Argus. You also want to try and fucking all in in mid lane whenever you can, and then late game, you just want to be the anti-dive machine. Make sure no one can come near you. It's time to attack. All right, level one in conquest. We're gonna get mage's blessing. Where is it? Lost artifact. One health, two mana. And then your beads. Obviously, I know I'm level twenty, and I am, and I have like eight thousand gold. But we're just gonna pretend that I'm level one. All right. So level one, which one do is gonna have one rank in your one. And what you can do is you can stand right here and have your jungler pull the buff camp. So you have your jungler, you can just tell him to slightly stand over here and pull the buff camp like this. That way, if you're standing over here, you can one from here and hit the entire camp. If you're not in comms with your jungler, your jungler isn't listening, and you want to make sure you hit the entire thing, you can one the buff from right here and then walk to lane. But it is faster and more efficient if you one from here. So just telling your jungler, hey, pull it to the side a little. Usually is the best way to go and usually helps out a lot. All right, so we're just gonna chill here and wait. Buff should be spawning soon. Also, never start right here and get the full like cone damage plus the one damage. The cone damage is kind of irrelevant. Just one normally will give you enough. So you'd one like that, you'd walk to lane, you'd get your farm from the speed buff, you'd walk to lane, walk to lane. You'd get to lane, you'd start auto attacking the wave. Then you stop auto attacking so now the minions are cc then you'd one remember if you continue auto attacking the minions are going to be in a state of knockback and they're not going to be able to get one into the fist you're going to hit level two you're going to come to your smalls you're going to two one and they would die and that's level one on Hera. all right All right, the next thing we're going to go over is how to play Hera in Conquest. Also, I just have a random build that gives me a bunch of movements being cool cooldown, so I can show you stuff faster, don't actually use this build. But playing Hera in Conquest is pretty straightforward. So, you know, you're just going to be chilling in mid, farming in mid. If their mid laner ever walks up even slightly, you're going to do that combo I told you about, where you all three, two on the knockup, and then you one while they're slowed, all right? 
that's going to be your ideal combo. And if they're still running away, Argus can go under tower and chase them while you auto attack them down, all right? Another thing you're always going to be wanting to look for is, well, in team fights, usually if you're fighting around Fire Giant, which is where most games end up, you're going to be fighting around here and around here. You're just going to look to Argus people to disrupt them, all right? You're going to look to Argus people from this angle to either execute them or knock them up, or you're going to come back here and Argus them over here, Argus the carries, try and fuck them up, or you're going to continue to stay back here and use your Argus as the anti-dive mechanic we talked about, where you Argus yourself and then shield and then kite around. Also, I'm going to quickly do this blue buff so I have more mana sustaining cooldown. If you're playing up and you're playing aggro, I like to think of Argus as an engage tool, all right? I'm gonna look to like hide around here. This is risky going over here, so you usually want your front line to move up to here if you're going over here. And you're gonna look to Argus someone here to cut them off, to fuck them up. Also, in the early and mid game, we're gonna have to walk over. Early and mid game, if you're in mid and you shove your wave, bada bing. And you see that the enemy mid laner is backing, you can be like, hey jungler, come over. You can be like, hey ADC, clear your wave, come over. Drop Argus on the Gold Fury, and then you and your ADC, or you and your jungler can just sneak the Gold Fury, right? So all the stuff we talked about in the mechanic section, you just want to relay that here. And if you're fighting by Gold Fury, you just want to look to, you know, hide behind pillars and then drop Argus. Where if you're on the defensive, you want to look to hide behind these walls right here. And then look to execute people with Argus like that. Or you just hold Argus as your anti-dive tool when their jungler goes on you, alright? So that's Hera in Conquest. <clears throat> Anyways, that's the video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Remember, future video is probably going to be a Discordia guide. And after that, I'm not sure. I'd have to go check. Also, if you want to give me suggestions on what you want to see, Twitch chat, Twitter, YouTube comments, I read them all, so just post away and I'll probably see it. Uh, I'd really recommend you come check out my stream. I try and stream every weekday in, in the mornings and the noons, but I'm, uh, I'm West Coast, so Pacific Standard Times for you East Coast people. It'll probably be, you know, noon and afternoon. So that's usually when I stream. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. I always tweet out my stream. Maybe one day I can't stream. I'll tweet it out. You'll get to see all that shit's in the description. Anyways, like, share, subscribe, all that shit if you like the video. Have an amazing day, guys. Love you. Goodbye.